Welcome to Peanuts Automotive Adventures. Yeah, that's Peanut. I'm James. Welcome to Peanuts Automotive Adventure, where every day is automotive adventure, right, Peanut? And before we get into today's video, give us official shout out to our official sponsors. The GraphicSpotVA.com. Reach out to them. Uh, we're going to also have the Etsy store right there. Reach out to them for any of your graphic needs, um, graphic design. Um, he's doing everything, y'all. Uh, custom tumblers, engraving, uh, <coughs> custom hats, um, hoodies, t-shirts, yard signs, uh, static signs, uh, signs for your business, all that. So reach out to him, y'all. You know what I'm saying? He's there for uh, to service you guys. And also, let's give a um, shout out to, it's going to be right there. Hopefully, it don't block me out. Uh, innovative powders for all your powder coating projects. You know, if you got any type of powder coating projects, reach out to him. He does great work. Got any color you need, any custom color, he can get it for you. Uh, you know, reach out to him. Um, great dude, great small business. Like we stated, does great work for us. Today's video is on, as y'all can see, we in GNX 549, which is our 1987 Buick Grand National. It's it's our second Buick Grand National in the fleet. Uh, we're sitting in it. Uh, I had to pull it out. Yeah. It started right up, Peanut. Yeah. I had to pull it out. I didn't even have a battery tender on it. That's a good thing. Yeah. I had to pull it out because I had to sweep underneath it, you know. Um, yeah. And by me having it out, I'm looking. I'm like, man, today would be a great video on what makes... What, why what? is the Buick Grand National considered uh, a, legend. a legend, right? You know, it's considered a legend because of what? What you, what you know? It's, for me, it's considered a legend uh, because of the performance and the looks. That's yeah. me. When I was a kid, that car, I saw it. I don't know if I ever told this story. A bunch of videos back a couple of years ago. Um, there was an American Standard factory. They made plumbing parts and toilets and stuff. In Louisville, Kentucky, where I'm originally from, and uh, one of the workers there had a 1987 Buick Grand National. I never forget the car, uh, and I fell in love with it. Uh, I know where I'm from in Louisville. It's it's a legend. It has a legendary a legendary status and heritage. But we are gonna get into the nooks and crannies. See, this is all uh, what's the opinionated, very opinionated, because to some people, this car ain't legendary. To some people, this car is not a classic, but to me, it's, it was one of my goals, Peanut, to own. Hey, what? before we get deeper into it, what is your dream car? This was my dream car, so I got to ask Peanut his dream car. What was your dream car? Let us know. Let R34 Team Running know. Peanut's dream car is a R34 GTR. Um, 1999, 9-ish car. They're finally allowed over here in uh, in the U.S. because they're 25. Uh 20, 25 years old, 25 years old. And so, you know, we're going to work hard on trying to get that GTR, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're going to work hard on that. We, we can make it happen. We can speak it into ex existence. But uh, pretty much, it's very opinionated why this car is legendary. But to the Buick, Turbo Buick brothers and sisters out there, it's legendary, right? Let me know in the comments why it's legendary to you, the 19... Uh, the Turbo Buicks, it don't even have to be a Grand National, it's Turbo Buick period, but we're going to speak on today, the Buick Grand National. So, uh, um, so the performance, right? Yeah. It outperformed just a regular Regal, yeah. right? Just a regular um, Regal that you could get a, a, a V6 in or a V8. And I think some Regals might have came diesel, I think. Yeah. Hey, let me know in the comments, did some of the Regals, G-bodies come diesel? Any G-body yeah. come, come with a diesel engine. Um, for that year in 86, 87, the Grand National was faster than a Ferrari Yeah. for that year. Now we ain't talking about, uh, in present day, we're talking about in the eighties, the Grand National was putting up performance numbers, uh, when it comes to speed, uh, faster than a Ferrari. Yeah. Um, also we all know too, the Grand National was a side project. It was a, a Buick project to make fun of the Chevy guys over in the Corvette division, and also the Buick was faster than a Corvette. That was the whole point of them making um, the, I want to say the last year of the Grand National yeah. was to make sure that it was faster than the Corvette for that year, and they achieved that too. Um, 
let me see, Ken Baker is 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 the guy, the engineer yeah. that fitted the Buick, you know, with the turbocharger. You know what I'm saying? On the 3.8 liter, 109 block, uh, V6. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he did a great job with it. You know, yeah. forced induction was pretty kind of new. Uh, kind of new back then in the 80s. Uh, a lot of people was uh, was going away from it or swaying from it. Not going away from it, just kind of staying away from it. Except for Ford, because we all know Ford had the Mustang SVO. That four cylinder 2.3 with the uh turbo, uh, uh, the Grand National, uh, you know, it thundered ahead of the pack, you know, for those years in the 80s, it was ahead of its time, uh, for the 80s. And you know, and I know y'all got some stories team running in your Grand Nationals, especially, uh, you know, you guys out on the street, um, street sweeping people. What I, when I say street sweeping, it means going faster than people. People was underestimating this little V6. That's what also made me fall in love to it too. When I seen that, when they had a V6, right? You know, power six V6, uh, and it was taking out V8s. So I fell in love. Uh, I know for a fact that we are the nemesis to the five liter Fox body Mustang guys. The, uh, the Buick Grand National was his thorn in his side. Um, what else? What else? What else? Peanut. Mm. Uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, the Grand National is legendary too, because they didn't, they only made it for a few years, yeah, right? Yeah. Come on. You out the frame, man. You out the frame. Uh, the last year for it was 1987. Um, to me, that gave it a legendary status, and what made it also more legendary was the Buick GNX is more legendary than the Buick Grand National because they only made so many of them. Five hundred forty-seven. We all know that, right? Team run it. And uh, what else? What else? Peanut. Uh, uh, also, it's legendary because of the time frame when. The government was really big on emissions and making stuff low horsepower and all of that. Matter of fact, I think our Grand National got 85 miles per hour on the speedometer, I think. Uh, on these digital speedometers, I know on that car, um, uh, Pete helped me get that limiter off of it where it only went up to 85. Now it go up to 140. Uh, he did that for me when I had him rebuild that uh, digital dash for me a couple of years back. Uh, yeah, with the, with the gas prices, the government involvement and all that good stuff, uh, this car was making decent horsepower. Like the V8s for that time frame, uh, the emissions was just killing them and making them low powered cars. So, you know, that's another why I see this car is so legendary. Um, it's legendary too because everywhere we go, like we stop at the gas station, right? Yeah. Everybody want to talk to us, right? Yeah. Everybody want to look at the car, talk to you, you know. Uh, to get that attention, you gotta have some type of status, some type of legendary status. You know what I'm saying? Uh, what else, Peanut? Um, I don't know. I'm trying to think. The demand for the Grand Nationals was high. Everybody wanted one. Uh, what else? It, that, to me, it gave it a legendary, like, nice status. Uh, what else? I'm trying to think, man. But, why do you think this car is legendary in your own words? You know, put it in the comments, you know, let us know why you think this car is legendary. And I'm, uh, me being from, uh, the West end of Louisville, you know what I'm saying? Like when we saw one, you just stopped and looked at it. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, when was it? When I was a kid, I didn't see too many on the highways. Not too many. Let me see. I'm trying to think. And you really don't see many now, right? Yeah. Like we can go to cars and coffee. We're, we're sometimes we're the you know we ninety percent of the time we're the only Grand National there at the yeah. cars and coffee events, uh, car show events. Only time we ain't the only one if we go to GS Nationals, right? Yeah. Which is this year, y'all. Uh, y'all come out to them your GS Nationals, man. Support that you know out there at uh, yeah. Bowling Green, Kentucky, at Beach Bend Raceway. So support that. Yeah. Uh, what else? What else? I don't know. It's just going to, I don't know. It's just something about this car, man. You know what I'm saying? Something about it that, um, for me, it brings out my, my inner child. You know what I'm saying? When I drive it, when I'm in it, because when I was a child, I had this goal of this is what I want. This is what I want. Just like how you want an R34, right? Yeah. Cause you, you know, you're this age. When you get your R34, you're going to think on your childhood. Watch. 
Mark my word. Mark my word. But we sitting in it because I just wanted this. I just wanted GNX 549 to be silhouette for this video. The backdrop uh, for this video. You know what I'm saying? Because it brings... Um, for me, it's a dream come true. This car is legendary to me. It might, you know, it's just a dream come true to own not only one, but two. To own yeah. two Grand Nationals. It's just, you know, for me, it's just... I don't know. I'm humble. I'm humbled and grateful and, you know, maybe one day we can get number three, huh? Yeah. But, you know, uh, man, it's, it's just so, it's a good feeling. It's a good feeling driving them. It's a great yeah. feeling. Not a good feeling, but it's a great feeling. Great feeling. That's why we take care of them, right? Yeah. Try to keep them clean, keep them running good. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, just, just do our thing with them, right? Yeah. And we appreciate all the vendor support out there. Uh, I mean, if I forget you, I'm I'm sorry, but you know, gbodyparts.com. Uh, I'm gonna uh, shout out Heartline Performance. They do a lot for the community. Uh, Full Throttle out of Michigan. They do a lot. I'm trying to think of who else. Peanut. Classic Industries. They do a lot. Um, man, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. You know, just all those vendors, man. You know, let me stop thinking. All those vendors that keep these cars alive. Uh, thank you to Hot Wheels Mattel for making the, um, the, the, the small cars replicas. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm, I'm gonna say it right. The Mattel, they make the little, thank you to the first Fast and Furious for having the Grand National in there. Yeah. Uh, four of them, cause they yeah. was, uh, chasing the, I forget who it was, the fuel trucks or whatnot. Um, no, the four cars were Hondas. No, they had Grand Nationals. Oh, yeah, those thought. were. Yeah, we need to rewatch it. See, yeah. we need to rewatch it. Um, I'm trying to think of other vendors. You know, yeah. just thank y'all for all this support for the Buick, man, to keep these cars alive. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. Thank you to all those, um, um, you know, maintenance guys, mechanic guys that's keeping these yeah. cars alive. Thank you to Steve V Automotive yeah. out of Virginia. Thank you to... Um, uh, Watts Performance Solutions. Yeah. Uh, thank you to Jordan Performance Solutions. Yeah. You know, just thank you to all you guys, man. Because, you know, I'm sitting here thinking, like, man, we need to be grateful that we are able to keep yeah. these cars running and alive. Because it's 2024. These cars was started in 82. Actually, way before that. But just for the Turbo Buick's sake, uh, 1982. Um, yeah. Actually, it was 78 was the first Turbo Buicks, believe it or not, Sport Coupes. Yeah. So, 78 on, you know, it's just, man, thank y'all, you know what I'm saying, for keeping these cars alive, yeah. allowing us to pick y'all brains and allowing, and you guys making them quicker, faster, uh, you know. And then I'm going to jump into another subject. I just, w I just hope that one day all the Turbo Buick brothers and sisters can just get along you know what I'm saying? And we all help each other. You know, we all assist yeah. each other. You know, we all help each other make each other's car faster. Because I see in other, uh, what is it called? I see in other car groups, like I'm going to use the new Supra for, for an example. I know for a fact them guys be helping each other out. Yeah. And I know for a fact them guys are running in the sevens and sixes and all that. And I know for a fact them guys ain't fighting each other. So I wish the Turbo Buick community can learn from them. Just evaluate them and see how, you know, I feel like that we can get along a little bit better. You know, uh, I had no beef with nobody in the Turbo Buick community. No beef. Uh, I had love for everybody. Love for everybody because the common denominator and the common factor is these cars right here. These cars, right? Yeah. But hey, don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and share. Hit that notification bell. Hit that notification bell. You know, thank you for all the support. This is Peanuts Automotive Adventures. That's Peanut. I'm James. We out. Peace. Peace.